Hello, welcome to News Click. The US yesterday imposed sanctions on Iran after having exited from the nuclear deal. Now, this is being considered as a violation of international law and of the UN Security Council Resolution 2231. So, to talk about that further, we have with us Prabir Purkayasta. So, sir, before we talk about what exactly happened and what were the implications, what do you think is the intention behind this move? I think Trump wanted at least to establish that he could get a better deal than Obama did. This is, of course, one part of the electioneering he did during his campaigning as Hillary Clinton. There's a very bad deal. The U.S. has screwed up badly. The Obama presidency was poor, didn't have a proper deal, and so on. So that has been a background part of it. But the, probably the driving force behind the deal is really Israel who wanted Iran to be isolated in West Asia, and particularly after Basar al-Assad's victory in Syria, and effectively he has won the ground war in Syria, the need to also keep Iran out of, uh, shall we say, near nearby region. Mm -hmm. Lebanon, of course, they're already there with Hezbollah. Now they're in Syria. They have been the allies of Bashar al-Assad on the ground in the battle against in the insurgency there, which, as you know, was a proxy war by the U.S., the West, Saudi Arabia, as well as by Israel. So with all that has happened, I think the issue was Israel would like to put more pressure on the Iran. And the United States is their best bet to do it because there is no way Israel can really directly put pressure on Iran. So... Uh, the, if the U.S. imposes sanctions, then Iran will be far more on the defensive. And Iran is an 80 million people with a vibrant economy. It has oil and gas reserves. So it's of, obviously a much bigger player in the region than Israel would be, which is outsider of the, in the region, considered as such, and also relatively a much smaller economy. So I think this is U.S. serving Israel's direct interest by trying to isolate Iran and of course with the help of Saudi Arabia as well. So this move, if we can talk about its impact on other stakeholders like all importing countries like India itself, what do you think is going to be the impact on these countries? Of course, the intent to hurt Iran means all those who import Iranian gas or oil are going to be hurt because they have already been buying from Iran, they'll have to diversify their source of energy, or they'll have to run the gauntlet of U.S. sanctions as well. So this is the twin danger that all oil importing countries from Iran or gas importing countries from Iran will get. India has an additional problem because it was a partner to Iran in both the Chawar port as well as also in the uh, one of the Iranian gas fields. So there is a future investment, also existing investment at stake for India. One part for India is very clear, that our energy bill is going to rise because Iran was also supplying us at lower rates, also giving us longer credit. Also, it's closer to us. Iran is virtually next door. So the freight charges were also less. The insurance costs were lower. So this is going to raise... India's energy bill considerably. Mm. Plus, the kind of crude that Iran was selling to us is also suitable for our certain refineries. If we want to get that crude, that kind of crude, we will then have to either pay more or we'll have to change some of the refinery settings, some of the refinery equipment that we use in order to uh, process other, other feeds. So for us, it, economically, it's going to be definitely a setback and it can increase our energy bill by, say, about 8 to 10 percent, which is a very high figure. We are importing a considerable amount of our hydrocarbons today, mm -hmm. oil and gas, from Iran. So this is going to be a, a certainly and economically something which is going to hit us. It's also not going to be easy to find alternate sources of oil because Iranian oil, if it goes out of the market, as U.S. intends, of course, other countries like China and Turkey have said they will not accept the sanctions. But if they do have to accept reduction or at least not increase their consumption or you know stop buying Iranian oil, there is going to be huge dislocation in the oil market. And it certainly push up the cost considerably. America is trying to sell India shale oil or gas. And I think per equivalent, say, uh, barrel of oil, 
uh, if you take the equivalent cost, which is roughly at the level of today, 70, 75 dollars, uh, I think we'll be adding another 10, 15 dollars to that. Mm. Of course, the oil prices have been fluctuating from 50 to 75 in the last six months. So we have to see what the current prices are, but it can add considerably to our uh, oil bill. So this is the huge one part of the risk we carry, that it risks the Indian economy. Mm -hmm. And also with the current inflationary pressures that we are seeing, it means a worsening of the situation. We are not exporting more goods. So our foreign exchange also position may actually weaken as a consequence. The second part of it, I think, which is the bigger issue, is in the global market, it can create a situation where the oil prices rise. It can go up from $70 to $80 to $90, even $100. So we don't know what the uh, amount of uh, prices that we, what the kind of prices we are likely to see, because it means a huge amount of oil, which is currently available going, going out of the market. Let's also look at the other side. America is also sanctioning, the United States is also sanctioning Russia. It's also trying to force Russia to export less to Western Europe because the pressure in Western Europe is to buy shale gas from the United States, the same offer they're giving India. So that is also the second pressure that is being put on the oil markets. Russia is the other a big exporter. And then the third big exporter, Venezuela, which is also under sanctions. Mm -hmm. So all of this could be a ploy of Trump, since we asked the first question, what is Trump's intent? It could be to raise the oil prices to a level where shale gas becomes economic and shale oil becomes economic because the United States is the larger producer of shale oil and shale gas. So these are the consequences. I think India has to make a firm position mm -hmm. and say, we will not accept these illegal sanctions and try and see how they can then have a long-term deal with Iran which was the kind of barter agreement it had earlier, that we will sell to you certain goods and we'll buy you from oil and gas. And if there is a deficit, a deficit for in the, in the Indian side, then we make do with a third country, uh, third country partner, mm -hmm. like Turkey, like Russia, or like China, so that we can at least buy goods from them and or goods, sell goods to them, and then make up the difference with Iranian oil. So, you know, that you mentioned stakeholders and firm positions. Russia, after Trump's remark about how no one is going to be in business with U the US if they're going to be, be in business with Iran. So, Russia declared that we are still going to be in business with Iran. And a lot of EU firms, it's come to notice, that are nullifying the US legal action. So, do you think this whole move and this deal is going to have a boomerang effect for the US? Let's look at it this way. China and Russia are certainly not going to get, accept American sanctions. They are already, at least Russia is already under US sanctions, so he doesn't really care. China has said they will not accept the sanctions. China is too big an economic player. There's not much the United States can do about it because both Chinese and the American economy are tied in a way that one cannot sanction the other without pains themselves. So that's as far as China is concerned. As far as other partners, and Turkey must also be considered a factor, Turkey has also said it is not going to accept the US sanctions. Mm -hmm. Turkey's relationship with the United States is also not particularly good. We have had a break in relations with Canada, but th this is a part of the larger uh, problems now Turkey seems to have with NATO. Coming to the EU firms, now EU firms will be talking about lots of things, but the problem that the EU as a whole has and particularly the companies in you have, is they're very much a part of the dollar regime. They're a part of the dollar economy. And any country which clears foreign exchange in dollars has to deal with the United States. And if the United States uses its sanctioned power, then this dollar trade becomes almost impossible. So they have to now work out what is the alternative that they have if not using the dollar. That is one, the number one problem all these companies are going to get. The second problem the companies are going to get, they have also huge economic uh, stake in the US market. So either in buying vital parts of components that they need or in exporting the finished goods to United States. So I think it's not so easy for the European Union companies to be able to run the sanctions. In fact, the issue is what can their governments do? 
and will the government protect them in certain ways against US sanctions. There have been times where they have done this or they have promised to do this, but how much this will succeed we have to see. Because as you said earlier, this is illegal sanctions. If Americans can get away with the US san illegal sanctions and if the EU collapses in front of the US, US sanctions, then it means that EU does not really have an independent economic or foreign policy because they agree that Iran was completely within the uh, completely satisfied all the clauses of the agreement. Mm -hmm. The Iran did not violate any clause of the agreement and this is a unilateral abrogation of an agreement which has been reached with six countries plus Iran. So it is not that it was in the unilateral agreement between the United States and Iran. And this was something which was within the UN Security Council's uh, preview, purview. The UN Security Council has also taken this agreement into account and then also asked various things to be uh, done in order to verify the accord and so on, which is why the, the IIA was part of this agreement and observed, did various steps to see that Iran had kept it. So after all of this, if the other EU partners who were a part of the agreement do not are, or are not able to stand up to US pressure, I think it would be a very unfortunate day for them that they really at the end of it have no independent foreign policy. Hmm. Thank you Prabir for taking our time to speak with us. Thank you for watching News Click.